Greetings, discreet defenders. I want to make a quick update video about the shoot I did last week, the long, drawn-out shoot where I did both a chronograph test and a gel test of some Hornady critical defense in 32 Magnum and a Corbon 38 special load, 125 grain load. Uh, during the shooting of the video, I was a little bit confused by where the uh, the separated jacket had come from, and it took me uh, until after I had shut the camera off to realize that all the 32 Magnum bullets still had their jackets on, and so the separated jacket, therefore, theoretically, came from the one of the Corbon bullets, and uh, indeed it would appear that both of the Corbon bullets that I captured, this here's the other one, um, had uh, experienced jacket separation. This is the, uh, this is the other jacket. Um, so presumably the two that were complete pass-throughs had not experienced jacket separation. And somewhere out there in the woods are these two Corbon bullets with no expansion and no jacket separation. But over here on the right are the four 32 h and mag bullets from Hornady. Those are the critical defense. And I measured the, uh, the perfect expander down here and found it's just short of 10 millimeters in diameter. So, and this one is the one that went 14 inches. These three were the ones that tumbled. And I think what happened is that after they tumble, and I've experienced this with, with other, other uh, critical defense loads too, especially in the 380. After they tumble, they kind of drag, the pedals kind of get dragged up in the gel, and it looks like they haven't quite had complete expansion. You know, look at that one, for example. But I'm not sure that that's really what's happening. I think it's just an artifact of the tumbling. I think what you have here is that all four of the critical defense loads did produce complete expansion like this one did. It's just that three of the four tumbled in the gel and then had their pedals dragged, you know, back upward, giving the appearance of improper expansion. But of course, you wind up with a a wider diameter bullet at the end too, but I've never really been comfortable measuring the diameter of those copper pedals. I don't think they're really uh, contributing to the crush column in any meaningful way, particularly not if they're just sort of dragging behind as the bullet is turned around after tumbling in the gel and moving this direction. There's no real way to predict whether or not it would do that in human tissue, although I imagine, given the right mix of tissues, um, maybe in a liver, for example, they probably would tum tumble the way they do in gel, or maybe in muscle, I don't know, maybe passing through a thigh. So I pretty much look for these to give a, a better idea of how much expansion you have. And I don't know if you can tell from my thumbnail, but this one expanded to a little over 0.38 diameter, and that is bigger than uh, than a 38 caliber. I'll give you an idea here. A 38 caliber is actually 357 diameter. Let's see if I can zoom in on that and and show you what I mean. You can kind of visually see that the uh, the critical defense bullet is a little bit bigger. Than the uh, than the 38 special, the final expanded diameter of the 32 H and R mag is a little bit greater than the unexpanded initial diameter of the 38 special. So that's definitely an advantage to the uh, to the Hornady to the critical defense because with a, about 160 foot-pounds of energy, 
that round winds up penetrating to 14 inches of gel and expanding to a slightly greater diameter than a 38 special bullet that does not expand. All right. Thanks, folks.